Fighters Corner Podcast. I'm John Grosky. With me is Mike Davis and Jonah Williams. And today, Mike, we had two very special guests in with us to the studio. Yeah, we've we've had we've had a few guests in person in the past. We've got a bunch more lined up, but like you know, the goal is uh, you know we always kind of have like a set uh, goal to achieve, and this one was like a like a blue chip prospect. Sure. And uh, a couple weeks ago, I mentioned Sean Simpson to you, and you did a little research. What do you think? Well. Truth be told, you actually told me about Sean Simpson like many moons ago, and I just rolled my eyes and just hung up the phone. <laughs> and then I called you a few months back, or a few months later, and I'm like, Mike, have you heard about this Sean Simpson guy? And you're like, come on, dude. I thought you were kidding <laughs> come me. Come on, come on, yeah, dude. No, I honestly thought you were oh, he's legit, me. man. He is yeah. legit. You know, and he's doing all the right things. Like the discipline, like we talk about discipline and training and, you know, the type of lifestyle you got to live. And, you know, he's he's not just talking the talk. He's walking the walk. Yeah. Look, when I used to watch, when I was watching his fights, I noticed uh, he's got that it factor, that it factor that's going to sort of carry him to be a champion, a world champion in boxing. So basically, on the show, we we've had the fortune to have some former world champs. We've had a couple current world champs. Um, I think this this is our first future world champ. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is the one we're kind of hedging on. We're like, all right, we got to get somebody that's going to like not return our phone calls in three years. Who could it be? <laughs> and I'm Simpson. like, yeah, Sean Simpson. Yeah. It's got to be him. Yeah. But it's hardly a long <laughs> shot. I mean, because as a kid, I mean, he has the crazy pedigree. And then, like you said, super disciplined. Very, 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 very on top of what it takes to be a professional athlete. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, the thing with Montel, Montel Griffin. Is, his trainer. His, who's his trainer, who obviously said in. Former world champ. F- he, his like boxing vision and understanding is a lot different than many other people. Like the windows of opportunity that either he creates or he sees and tries to push you through is uh, all you got to do is listen and have like faith in his system. Mm. It works. It yeah. frustrates people. It angers people. I mean, when he fought James Tony, when he fought Roy Jones Jr., yeah. You know, I mean, it's... Yeah, Simpson is definitely walking down the right path with the right guy giving him directions. Yeah. You know, and... If I'm crossing the street, it's going to be with Montel. You know, you're you're dodging traffic, that's mm-hmm. a guy I want guiding me. Yeah. And you could tell, there's... There's a bond there. There is. Yeah. There is. There definitely is. Good interview. I it thought so. Real good interview. It flowed real well. Um, hey, a lot hey, of interesting hey, stuff. Hey, Jonah, did you look up Sean Simpson online at all? I did. Very, very little stuff. See, that's what makes interviews like difficult too, you know, which kind of separates us from like a lot of other people. And, like, and that's why you come here because I mean, you could Google next great prospect. You're not going to find this guy, no. but if you happen to be in the, the scene, fight community, yeah. then you come across guys like this, and you you know what to look for when you've yeah, been around, and this it, is what you're looking for. And I'm not trying to toot our horn, obviously. But when you get a guy like Sean Simpson where you're very limited in regards to what's online and what's on YouTube, if you don't know your stuff, man, yeah. you're going to look stupid. Yeah, it was a good challenge, though, because yeah. there was a lot of questions that we that had. That wasn't easy. And it's not that he was like a hard person to talk about, but we have like a roadmap that we set up. Mm-hmm. And hey, we're going to go around this angle. This is where our gold is at. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it's on intentional or unintentional. I, 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 probably intentional. There's very little out there on mm-hmm. him. It's just one of those guys where you go into a fight. I'd rather, I'd rather be overestimated than underestimated. Sure, sure. So. Yeah, I think uh, being an Olympic alternate really helped him because again, it, he got the seventeen years old on the Olympic team. He got the Olympic experience. He got the training. He got all that, but he didn't get these fights that are thrown out there, giving him away to his, you know, to his future opponents. Um, yeah, yeah, and he talked about it in the podcast. Yeah, you know, good. and, and you if know? he would have been eighteen on an Olympic year, I, I seriously doubt he would have been an. Never had a sip of alcohol. The guy was an Olympic village with all that partying, and all you hear is about partying there mm-hmm. and the women, and you know, it's just kind of a free for all. It's a bunch of eighteen-year-old athletes yes. <laughs> who are mm-hmm. all, from all over from the world. world. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, and, you and you know, the guy stayed disciplined. I mean, yeah. it's just it kind of it, it speaks volumes of who yeah. he is as a person and his character. So. If you like it, hit subscribe, share it, like, and... I think it's subscribe, like, share. I think you got all three. Dude. Whatever. There's nothing else you can do. There's a point you got to get across. Yeah. I just did it. <laughs> but they also demonetize... Or, well, or de- de-rank. 
hey guys, you know what? It really does us a favor if you like, share, subscribe because they YouTube and like the algorithms de rank independent commentary. We are not journalists, we are just fight insiders. So if you guys like this and you like, share, or subscribe, it's the only way we can grow. So if you guys can do that, man, we'd really appreciate it. So hey, enjoy the listen, guys. So who are you taking in this weekend's fights? I know who I got, and it's not who you think. So I'm going to take my picks over to the world's safest and most trusted online gambling site and make a few bets. That's right, it's BetDSI.com. With more than 20 years' experience in the online gaming industry, BetDSI has the best sign-up and deposit promotions on the web. They also boast more deposit options than any other betting site, including fast, free, and secure payouts. Also, for our listeners, they are offering a special promotion where you can build a bigger bankroll and get 100% sports cash bonus. When using our promo code, Fighters Corner, all one word, that's 50% more sports cash by using our promo code, Fighters Corner. Check out BetDSI for all your online gaming needs. Also, please don't forget to subscribe, hit like, share, all because you can find us on iTunes, Spotify, Radio Player, iHeartRadio, SoundCloud, Tune in radio, and the guy sitting next to you on the train is probably listening to us, too. And if you can, show us your support by finding us on Patreon, where you can let us know how much you love us. And if you're a fan of boxing, jiu-jitsu, kumite, and even capoeira, go check out my guys at UCL MMA. These guys are the heavyweight champions of mixed martial arts shows. And if you think you're the next Johnny Lawrence, go to their website at uclmma.com. Shoot them an email and tell them John sent you before asking their matchmaker that you want to defend your All-Valley Karate Championship versus one of their fighters. That's UCLMMA.com. Welcome to the Fighters Corner Podcast. John with us. we got a couple special guests. Montel yes, we Griffin do. And Sean Simpson. Yes, Sean, you got a big fight coming up August 31st. Yep, yes, Who are you sir. fighting? I couldn't tell you his name. I wouldn't even... <laughs> Montel, why don't you tell me who he's fighting, man? Oh, I sent you the text. Dude. Felipe Salguero, <laughs> you guys know. Yeah, Felipe uh, Sal- Salguero, G U E R O. Yeah, that's who he's fighting right there. Yeah. <laughs> Felipe Salguero. So it's your second Mexican from Mexico. Do you have any concerns? Uh, nah, 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 I don't have no concerns. Um, I'm going to go in there and just do what I do best, you know, box, move, and be slick. So that's. What weight class is this being fought at? Bantam weight, 118. 118. And what are you weight at right now? Um, I left the gym today at 123. Are you constantly checking your weight? Uh, every two days or whatever. I have a, um, me and my tail have a, a schedule of weight. So like when I start camping, whatever weight I'm at, a certain weight, each weight I have to be a certain weight every every Friday. So because much- that'd be the weigh-in day. So Friday mm-hmm. is my weight check. So, so how have- much water do you cut? Not much. Not much. So, like, do you, I mean, like the day before the, fu- the day before weigh ins, how much off weight are you? I'm right on weight, like a pound off. Or, I'm eating breakfast in the morning for weigh ins. Are you oh, serious? Geez. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. We, we make weight right, right the, the right way. So, he always eat breakfast before the weigh in, make weight, be strong. What's your diet consist of? I eat. I mean, do you have like do you Big Macs? No, I mean, do you, nah, you, I don't you eat Big Macs? But like, <laughs> do you, do you like, like if I'm if I'm too low, if I'm too low or whatever, he'll tell me, okay, go eat a burger or something like that or right. whatever the case may be. But I try to like, I'm not a real water intake um drinker, so this fight I'm actually been drinking a lot of water. Okay, so, so you're like a pescatarian, you eat a lot of fish because I know Montel no, was not, on that for I, a minute. I, I eat still, everything. Yeah. I eat everything. He's everything. I'm three years. <laughs> That's good for being like. All right, so, so you're week. fighting on the uh, Lara Alvarez card. Yeah, yeah. Are, do you have any expectations of that main event? Um, do you watch it, or are you just concentrating on you? I'm really just concentrating on me right now. Um, I really don't too much get into you know the main event fight or Lara or. I don't even know who. All I know is that Alvarez dude is Canelo's brother. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. Canelo's brother. And then uh, you know, Lara fought um, Heard, and it was a fight of the fight of the year uh, award candidate. Yeah. So it's that, that's a legit fight. Like uh, Alvarez, they're bringing him in, and they're not doing him a favor, you know, at all. That's a hard fight. Well, you know, Lara's getting a little older, Cuban. So we might we, we know he's older than he really is, and his legs is slowing down now. Nah, he don't have the same legs. He. He's standing in front of guys fighting a little bit more, and her was just too big for him. But uh, this fight right here, you know, probably, you know, help him out, get back in the mix. Yeah, no, that's good. And, you know, like, speaking of Cubans, uh, your amateur career was pretty ex- extensive. Yeah, yeah. Uh, was it 201 and 20? 
So, Mattel, what do you refer to guys like Cuban fighters that got records like that? What you, what you Amateur say? pros? Yeah, Amateur yeah, pros? of course. I mean, any <laughs> any time a guy have two, three hundred amateur fights, they pros, you know what I'm saying? They just got to step and go, you know, the extra rounds. So, why such a large record, amateur record? I started boxing when I was eight. I yeah. ain't got no choice. <laughs> Can't go pro till you what, 18, 18, 18 years old? Right. I went pro at, at 21. So, you know, from eight to 21, um, I was fighting in every tournament. Especially as a kid, you fighting three, four, five times a week in a tournament. That's That'll a lot of it. fights. Yeah. Then, then when you use um, when I'm eight, nine years old, fighting in park district shows here, you know things like yeah, that. Yeah, see, man, this is like one of those. I mean, I boxed as a kid, obviously not to the levels that you did, but when somebody like you walked up, it was a nightmare. I mean, it was just like, man, this dude's got so much experience. Wow. <laughs> like, please right. not me. Please <laughs> I not got, me. <laughs> I got to the I got to the point like towards the end of my amateur career. I stopped fighting in tournaments. I was like, man, I'm not fighting in this tournament. I'm tired. <laughs> That's good. Now, now, who hooked you up with that card? Was it Peter Quillen? Yeah, yeah, I'm real, real close with Peter Quillen. How do you guys know each other? Um, well, from the Olympic trials, I fought in the Olympic trials, okay. and then um, I lost in the finals of the Olympic trials to Rashid Warren, and then so they invited me since I was the youngest. They invited me to the um, World Championship training camp for sparring. But I was the only amateur that they invited. They invited nothing but pros. So all the um, world cha- all the fighters that was fighting in the world championship, they had um, Sean Porter, they had Peter Quillen, they had Anthony Durrell, Lamont Peterson. That's um, like Luzu, huh? Man, they had um, who else was there? Was the that when Freddie was there? Yeah, 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 yeah. Who was? Yeah, when Freddie Roach. Roach was there. Freddie Roach? Fre- Freddie Roach was one of the trainers. Um, That's cool. What's the guy that dropped? Um, that dropped um, Lomachenko. Are you talking about in his first fight? Not Pedraza. No, no uh, the last, the, but he got stopped with the body right, shot. Uh, I know you're talking about, I, I can't remember his name. He was there too, huh? He was there. It's kind of oh, man, who? man, it was everybody there. You, you know what's kind of crazy? Like we Adrian always, Broner. Bro, was, Jesus. Did you room with him at all? Nah, Sean, Sean Porter was my roommate. Oh, was he really? Yeah. You know, do you ever watch, like, I know Montel's a boxing historian. Like, I, I always compare Sean Porter's movement kind of like a Jersey Joe Walcott. It's kind of like that L shape, and he throws you mm. off your rhythm, real weird angles. Who did you say that the, Sean kind of took that? It wasn't Mike Tyson. Did you say it was Mike Tyson? Yeah, kind of like a Mike yeah. Tyson, the head yeah. movement. Man, it's Sean, he Sean not as slick as Jersey Joe. Jersey Joe is one of the slickest fighters in history. You know what I'm saying? Slew foot to side to side. You don't see slick Porter doing that in some of his fights? Oh. Uh, Porter's just a tough, hard nosed kid yeah. that just like to fight. You know what I'm saying? He, he gonna do whatever it takes to win. Sean is a football player that know how to fight. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah, he's a good like way. Fall like like middleweight as an amateur. Yeah, went down. You know what I'm saying? To 140, 147. So yeah, yeah. I always I always notice in his fights he's got real quick hips. Like that's I think is his special move. Like yeah. he when he's in the ring bouncing around, so it almost looks like a cartoon, like animated. Right. You know what I mean? Like hips are here, hips are there. Right. Not I don't think. His other angles. fighters, yeah, yeah other fighters angles. in that, in that think, weight class. I think they like know. I think I think Sean and his team know they're not the best skill wise fighters. So so when they train, they train it straight for conditioning, conditioning. and they tell. train it to outwork you. Yeah. Right. So they going they right. gonna they gonna bull you, and they gonna and they gonna be in shape. They are gonna be ready to go twelve rounds, right. mm-hmm. and that's how they gotta. I mean, they know they limit. So you know what I'm saying? They not gonna be trying you get, to box you. Get the you. best of what it, what it, what he was blessed with. Yeah, that's you know right. I. I his father, like, it's, I, I know your father's real involved with your career as well. And whenever sometimes, like, there's that dynamic, it's either really good or really bad. And the training techniques that his dad, like, applies to him, man, they're cutting edge. Like, yeah. his dad is legit. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, his dad well, they goes got, all they out got the him. little, uh, the air machine, the uh, air machine uh, bag. That helix. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, That helix. See, like the gym is real nice. I mean, for for one fighter training at, at, at a time, it's, it's real nice. Yeah, uh, got the little room, like I said, no air, and you know, big ring and everything. It's, it's a nice gym. They got the technology. Yeah, you know, no, take yeah, him in yeah. shape. So, so, how did you two hook up? Um, I had worked with him before when I was well, like eleven, I oh five, oh six. Yeah. yeah, yeah, about eleven, I'm twelve years old. Before, we had a fight right, together, yeah. and then um, what happened to you? You just. <laughs> But, he gained yeah. a lot of weight, you know. What? What? What do you? What do you? What no, you I, think, I think that's when he went into the um the police. The uh, I went, oh, okay, yeah, I went. Uh, yeah. yeah, I started working with the, um academy. 
with Nate Jones. I started working with Nate Jones for for a yeah, minute. You know, I I think Jeff Mason as well. Him and yeah, Nate yeah, I was with Jeff too as well. Those two have a gym off Forty Seventh Street. And, yeah, Robert uh, Taylor. Yeah, man, dude, back in the day, I remember going to tournaments and looking at those gyms, going, "Damn, right. man, please no." Right. <laughs> that was like another one of them teams. Them yeah. in the Columbus and Park. Fuller Park Road was Hunter. right around the corner. Yeah. Fuller Park got a lot more, you know, more hoopla back in them days. I thought Columbus Lee. Park had the best like fight team for Yeah, but you know, Leroy Murphy, yeah. Randy Smith, Wayne, Lionel, Orlando Johnson, they was all training there. And it's just, Fuller Park was just, you know, the place to be in the 70s, 80s. Yeah, no, I agree. Yeah, no, I agree. I got to see a Wayne Lionel fight because. Wayne Lionel was not. What you kind of compared me to him. Orlando, you know, you know, the older guys I always take up. For the guys in they in they era. But Wayne Lionel was a great fighter, but I said I said OJ Sean was an Olympic alternate. I mean Wayne didn't get to that point. So, you know, I mean like I said, you know how it is. But if, even um at at the airport, um the dude that commentated oh, the fight. Oh, uh, uh Raymond Boom Boom. Boom Boom was talking okay, about Wayne Lionel. Okay, so I, I watched your last fight and Boom Boom was all over you too. Like yeah. he it's kind of weird, like for me, because you know, Matel, I, I watched you growing right. up, watching right. the Olympics and stuff like that. Like I've always obviously respected you, but it doesn't. It seems like maybe because you're not so loud that the other people that are yelling louder than you that don't don't have as much skill are kind of getting more credit than you deserve. And Ray wasn't having that; he was right. all over well, you. Well, Ray, yeah, was it in China? I think I fought in China. Ray was there. During the fight, we looked at each other, he smiled, and I'm like, man, that's, baby, that's Boom Boom Mancini. So we stayed cool. After that, we stayed cool. When he went in the Hall of Fame, um, I had bought a T-shirt, Baby Boom Boom Shot, wore that at his Hall of Fame announcement. So, I mean, when he got inducted. So we've been cool for a long time. We show a lot of respect. We talked to him before the fight, and um, we showed, you know, showed mad love. And, you know, Sean showed up, and uh, it was a great first TV fight for him. Yeah, yeah, no, it really was. It was kind of a coming out party. So for you, how, how did you have any uh, anxiety or anything going into that fight because about you know the stage that it was on? Nah, nah. You you talk about. I mean, I fought all over the world and fought in tournaments and things like that. Like, I think I get up for for TV fights uh, and a bit and a uh, bigger crowd and stuff. I'm not one of those people like. I don't like fighting in no gym room with 20 people there. Nah, I want to fight in an arena, and <laughs> I want cameras on me and all that. So, so as, as a professional, has he lost a round yet? I don't uh, think so. I got caught with a he, shot. Right. My Two judges gave the other kid a round. He, and one, one judge, judge gave me the round. I got caught with a shot. I got hurt, and I still came back. I thought I won a round. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, that have, it's called adversity. You know, you're going to have that. Oh, yeah. But he, you know, he was a swing bout that fight. So when you the swing bout, you can't sit around wondering what's going on. You just, no. it's just okay. Let's go. Yeah, there's no real warm up. Right, it's, just, you gotta, it's like flipping the switch. Let's go and fight. So it was cool. So now your amateur career was pretty decorated. Yeah. So you were was it the 2012 Olympic alternate? Uh huh. So what was your experience like being on the Olympic ladder? Which not many people can say that. Uh, it was nice, man. It, I mean. Uh... One, I got to miss a lot of school. <laughs> you were a senior at the time? I was a junior. You were a junior? How old were you? 17. That's nuts. I was When I started going to the Olympic Training Center, I started going to the Olympic Training Center at 16 years old. Okay. So and that's my first only. my first time fighting in an open tournament, I was 16. Um, I was still able to fight as a junior, but because it was an Olympic trials qualifier, they allowed me to fight in the men's division. So... I never fought three minutes before. I never fought. Um, I never fought grown men before. And uh, my very first fight of the tournament was against Rashid Warren. Okay, so now he later became your sparring partner. Well, I became his sparring partner. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you, no. <laughs> yeah. I mean, no, you gotta no, give credit. I mean, no, 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 you're right. You're right. right. So, uh, how many rounds do you think you've gone with him? A lot. A lot. Okay, I so sparred him a lot from the time you guys fought. Like to get that Olympic spot, as compared to the time that he was in the Olympics, did you notice that uh, your style changed? Did you figure him out? Were you keeping up with him, or was he still? I mean, you were a young kid. Was there still a yeah. level above? I you? mean, um, at the time, he was still a level above me. Um, I actually, I, I, I learned a lot from him from sparring with him and being around him and things like that. It was like after we fought. Cause I think, be honest with you, I was the only person in the United States that wasn't afraid of him to fight him. So, 
you know, so that's why when we fought, we had such great fights. And then um, after that, he he respected me because how young I was and how I wasn't afraid of him. So like when we was at the Olympic Training Center and yeah, traveling and things like that, yeah, yeah. he kind of you know took me under his wing. At, to this day, I still talk to him a lot, and you know he give me pointers and heads up about you know my fights and things like that. He's going through a rough patch right now. I think he's three and three in his last six. Yeah, but that was all all world title fights though. So yeah. you know. If you're gonna lose three fights, I mean, I I rather them be world title fights yeah. than just fighting anybody. So how difficult has it been? I mean, in the 118 pound weight class, how difficult has it been for you to get fights? Um, very difficult, especially when I was with um Warriors Boxing. Uh-huh. Um, they always would say that they couldn't find nobody my weight or <sighs> things I mean, like they, that. They're not it's, lying. Yeah. It's it's pretty hard. I I just think because of my my amateur background and things like that, they just they. They wanted money. My opponents want right. money, they, so right. it's gonna cost to fight me. So, well, I mean, that, that's it. I mean, you're an investment. I mean, honestly, if you look at your, I mean, what three time junior national gold glove champion, national pal champion, two time U.S. silver medalist, like you can't fake that stuff. You know, yeah. like you can get thirty and zero as a fighter, especially a heavyweight fighter, and really not be tested. But at your weight class with that type of pedigree, that you can't hide. Yeah. Least. So guys, like. You know, they're not going to take chump change to come take a loss. So, I mean, been hard, huh? I mean so you have Real to, so so us doing this, like, as really, like, being free agents, it's hard. But, you know, when you with people like Al Heyman and Eddie Hearns or something like that, they're willing, they the best, man? They, they're willing to pay the money to get that opponent for you so you can fight. Right. Now, it's, I mean, and... and I'm going to go a little deep dive here. It's been so difficult so people can kind of understand. You got flown to South Africa for a fight, and it never happened. Man. Hey, it was a free vacation. Well, what, I mean, <laughs> what, exactly, what exactly happened with I remember like following my tell. I'm like, yeah, he, you know, Sean's going to you know do some international stuff. You know, I'm on there cheerleading, and then I'm like, oh, man, you know, my tell didn't post anything. Man, it must have been bad. So I call him up like, man, how ugly was it? No, no, we never fought, man. <laughs> you know, I see pictures of food. I see pictures of everything. Just nothing of you in the ring, you know? Yeah. Uh, it just turned out to be a great vacation. Uh, good and bad. I mean, what happened? Well, in boxing, a promoter has to have a certain amount of money that the commission to get a commission so the commission knows the fighters will be taken care of. Yeah. And the check had to <clears throat> The check hadn't cleared yet. The day of the fight. Now, is this a so, promoter that they've been working with for a while? or? Uh, uh, I think they did shows, but they was doing them like in Ghana and stuff like that. They never did it in South Africa. Right. They ain't did it in that part of Africa. Probably so the first regulated. Yeah, so that was it. like... You know, they got to protect the fighter. You got to make sure that... The money is there, so it's trying to get paid. Man, can you imagine yeah. flying a bunch of guys in from halfway around the world and just go, "Hey, man." Nice, nice I mean, weekend. all the fights, all the fighters were were South Africans. Um, was Africans? I was the only American. So, wow, that's uh, still a hard fight to get, though. I mean, even, I mean, at your weight class, you're gonna it's about two thousand dollar plane ticket for you. Yeah, another you know, for your I, mean, I think he say blew about a hundred thousand. Oh my god! What the, the fight going off? With hotels and. How was and, it? Man. How was South Africa? Man, it, it was nice. Yeah, yeah, it was, uh, it was a great experience. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just the, the food was great. Uh, it was much. The city is way better than I expected. Johannesburg. Yeah. yeah Johannesburg. I heard at night it gets. I mean, I've I've had a couple buddies over there, and they they tell me kind of nightmare stories about. Yeah, it. I heard it's kind of dangerous, but we we was safe. We went out a couple of times. Uh. Yeah, but every city's got those problems. Yeah, you know what but I mean, I mean like, when people I don't, telling I don't know me why that people say was, that. They're telling us, don't even go running, that somebody going to rob you, do this, do that. Well, they better so, be in shape. Yeah, if they're going to rob you, know, you know, we, we kept our eyes open. I went with them everywhere we went. So we kept our eyes open. And everything worked out, you know what I'm saying? I got some stuff stolen from me, but besides that, that was only bad. Airport stuff? Stuff. All my personal stuff. From the airport or the hotel? Uh, from, from getting dropped off at the airport. I mean, the hotel to check get into my room, room, my bag came up missing. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah, That's so, boy. Yeah. yeah, it was, yeah, yeah. they got me. <laughs> yeah, they got me. Yeah, they got me. Dude, whenever I go to those third world countries, I always like, damn, oh, that ain't going to happen again. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. you got you to gotta keep an eye on everything. Man, everything is cheap. Oh, my is God. It, how was the food, man? Oh, 
man. I put on so much weight. I found out I found out I wasn't fighting. I had a steak about this big. Man. This man said I ain't talked for twenty minutes. Nah. <laughs> he was on a rooftop. It was just it was beautiful. We're on the rooftop eating. That's a gorgeous game. I mean the country, oh, the was, man, gorgeous, I, uh, man. I went out, bought one round of drinks. It was like twenty dollars American. I made mean, top shelf liquor. Uh-huh. Like, I bought eight drinks. It was like twenty five dollars. That's crazy. I was like, man, we could live here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just, it was just, Tell man. the old lady it's gonna be a minute. We're in man, it was, it was a great man. I, I I worked my butt off, got my weight down, running everything. And I put so much weight when I went to Africa. Man, I ate so much. You ate fries every day. Man, it was man, it, it was just great. The That's food cool. was great. Yeah, it was it was a great experience. That's good. Now sure. you know, like in terms of training, what are the musts? That Sean has to complete in order to, uh, you know, set foot in that ring. For you. Sean got everything. Sean, my job is easy. My my job is to get Sean sharp and get the confidence that he can go eight rounds, ten rounds, twelve rounds. That's it. He got everything else. My job is just to get him ready to go. You know what I'm saying? We we fought three, four, five, six rounders. Mm-hmm. Now it's time to go to eight rounds. Hopefully two or three. Then we'd be a, a main event fighter. And then after that, we'd be ready for a title. Yeah. So uh, next year, you know, so if we get two, three fights this year, next year we'll be ready for a title. How often do you are you running, Sean? Every day. Um, uh, except how, Sunday. Are, are you doing like sprints or are you doing kind of... I, I do the sprints towards like the end of camp. Okay. The sprints towards the end, more so long distance right now. And then... Uh, how, many towards miles, the, how many miles a day are you running? About four. Four Jeez. miles. Okay. And then um And then your regular workouts. Yeah. Man, I do like um I do like two a day sometimes. Okay, so you're fighting full time. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm full time. I always been full time. That's right. Yeah. Even when I wasn't fighting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so that's good. So you know, your dad is real obviously tied in with what it is you're you're doing. Right. Has he always been that way your whole life? My whole life. Everything. As far as when I was an amateur, as far as paying for me to Go to the national tournaments, and you know he just he invested a lot into me. Big influence, huh? Yeah. Now you're a new father. Yes, yeah, sir. You got a little kid now, huh? Yeah, I got a son. Look out, man! <laughs> When's he getting his first pair of gloves? <laughs> um, yeah, actually, phone. actually, yeah, we got some you know. um at the baby shower. Somebody, somebody um knitted um a, a lady from the gym. She um they she bought him um some knitted shorts and um knitted gloves. So I guess like at three months, because he's real small. You know, I'm not a big person. You he's want, a small his, you baby. want his bones to develop. So maybe about four or five months or Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll put them on him. We'll put him on him. <laughs> nah, that's good, man. How, how has your life changed a lot since then? Um not nah. Everything's really the same. I got a real good support system with my girlfriend. You know, that's good. So, um, that's real good. Right now we don't we don't stay together. So um, she know I got a fight coming up, so she know I need to be focused. So like every other day, I go spend um, hours with them after I train, and then from that house, I go to the gym late at night and do a workout before I go home and, and go to bed. Did you ever worry about burning out or overtraining? Nah, because I know when to rest, and he knows when I need need to rest my body. So, uh, What about sparring? How often are you doing that? Every other day, Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Okay. Now, I mean, do you do that nonstop, even when there's no fights, or are you... Are... Nope. I don't spar when I ain't got no fight coming up. I just yeah. train. I just work the flow. Yeah. How do you feel about sparring, Montel? I got, you know, I mean, we've, you've helped guys. Guys helped us. We helped them. Uh, you know, Josh Hernandez had a fight. He didn't have a fight. We wouldn't have helped him out. But uh, especially, you know, smaller guys, you know, they burn out a lot faster because making weight and everything like that. So we go by work rate and... um. How fresh he looking and how his weight like he finished sparred ten rounds a day weight was good mm-hmm. we but we below weight so we taking off tomorrow you know so we staying fresh and um, doing things the right way Man, that's smart you know yeah. I've I've watched a couple of videos of Sean and you fighting and you have some tendencies that remind me of somebody Montel does he remind you of anybody. He reminds me of you, Montel. I, and that's a bad thing. A, a lot a of people saying that. For opponents. I got Sean <laughs> trying to fight like me. I ain't never. We okay. never did that. But uh, okay. we, but, but the way he goes inside yeah. on people, like right. the way he counters by just yeah. cutting inside on right. them, it breaks people. <clears throat> yeah, and yeah. and it, it's hard to train for him. Boom, boom, pointed it out. Right. And like I remember like watching this fight. I remember calling John. I'm like, dude, this guy, he's got like the same type of blueprint, which works. Mm-hmm. The whole thing is about... Uh, Breaking somebody's wheel. Uh, you got a guy, round one, round two, swinging and missing, but keep getting hit. 
uh, his jab has uh, progressed a lot as we you know been been together. And um, his last fight, you know what I'm saying, supposed to be his first test, or whatever. Um, he hit the guy with a two or three four jabs and, and he shook his head. I said he ready to quit. You know what I'm saying? He looking. You know what I'm saying? He he frustrated okay, now. But, but it happens when they're throwing. So it's like every single time they throw right. a punch, they get pieced up like that. Right. It's like it, so it makes them stop no, throwing I don't punches. Want to throw a punch. It it's makes also them stop throwing punches. I'm yeah. the shorter fighter. I'm shorter. I'm nine times out of ten going to be shorter than everybody I fight. So instead of me having to really step in on them, I just let them come toward right. me, and it and it takes up the distance that I have to create. Right by cutting that. Great, great fighters know how to make opponents stop punching. You look at uh, Floyd and Pacquiao. Pacquiao is known as a punch, throw, throw a thousand punches. He, Floyd took him in deep waters, and Pacquiao didn't know what to do. He stopped punching. And, um, you know, like we always talk with his father, like, you got to throw more punches. I said, yeah, I understand that, but his opponent's not going to throw punches like that because they, they, once you get countered two, three, four rounds, then they change their attack. Unless it's just a guy that don't care about getting hit. Right. You know what I'm saying? They're going to stop throwing punches, as many punches. So, it's all it, that, like I said. Boxing is a dangerous sport, but it's an art. It's an 100%. art. Hundred percent. Punch, get hit, and don't get hit. Hit and don't get hit. That's that's the, the art of the sport, and we 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 mastering that. Um, I tell everybody, it's life at the boxing. You know what I'm saying? As dangerous as it is, it's life at the boxing. I'm not trying to. I would get hit in sparring. I would be mad a, a week. I'd be mad three. If I got hit with one clean shot, I'd be pissed off. And that's how that's how you gotta look at it. You know what I'm saying? You can't can't give in to taking punches. Yeah. Now, did you, you change your style once you started going with Montel, or has it always been that way? That's always been my style. Um, it just well, where does that come? I mean, both I mean, both of you guys have similar styles. Yeah. I, I mean, just, is, that, is that like a city thing? Is that he like I say, he was just blessed with the ability, and Man, he's been he's been watching you, Montel. That's I, what I just is. tried. To, I mean, just working. I just tried to enhance this when he first came to me. Uh-huh. Second time, I just try to cut, cut. You know, we 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 not gonna take. We don't have to take four, five big steps. We gonna stay right there, make a miss, make them pay. Step around. You know what I'm saying? Just change the things around. Just, uh, just make an adjustments. You know, I'm not trying to change them. I never tried to change them. I just tried to enhance the thing he was doing. We throwing more jabs, side to side, more defense, and stepping around and angles and everything. Yeah, now, Sean, like I noticed it was. Mattel's got a pretty active social media. It's I, I love. He's I got it starred so I can argue with his friends. <laughs> so uh, what I've noticed, like on your sparring, is that Mattel sees windows of opportunity, and it's like sometimes you do an exchange and you hear him go, go 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 go, get three in, get three in, mm-hmm. and it's like something that I know if I were in there I wouldn't see it, but he's got like a knack for that. Do, do you notice like when he's trying to push you through a window? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, especially during fights in the corner, man. He, he knows everything in the corner. That's one thing. Like everything he said in the corner, it, it works or it always is right there. Yeah, that's got it's got to give you a level of comfortability too. Yeah, especially you know the fight that I got hurt in. You know the way he got me through that situation. I never been hurt before in my life, but. I guess like me being a box, I kind of knew what to do already uh-huh. instantly. My Instinct. instincts came in, Instinct. but the way he like, you know, what I'm saying, you know, how people can get like frantic or you know, panic you look, you about learn something. A lot about yourself in a three minute boxing round, man. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You do. Yeah, Only thing I could think of, like, man, I can't let this dude. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> I can't let this dude, man, <laughs> knock me out. That's the only thing I'm thinking. I'm thinking I'm thinking. Then it's like. Your instinct come in like that's when like your heart. That's when you see when somebody got hurt. I mean, because when I got hurt, yeah. my instinct was to fight back. You know, I mean, after I held him a couple times, wrestled him. You gotta do what you gotta do. Yeah. Then I just sat in the pocket. and I was like, okay, now I'm gonna fight you. He kind of got your wits back to you. Yeah. Then right. I beat him up. So <laughs> he he wasn't there, but he was there because he don't remember, but he listened to everything I said. He did it. We look. I look him right in his eyes. I talk to him. The main thing is being uh, make him comfortable and relax. Uh, it, it's just a thing about Eddie Fush and Theo Torrance. It's just a comfort zone. Like when I looked at them, they was, was they were so comfortable and upbeat and confident. They made me confident. You know what I'm saying? I'm looking at these guys and they comfortable and they confident. So I'm like, okay, I'm confident. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And um, 
uh, if we had a break in action or whatever, I'm looking at my corner, getting instructions. And um, I just, you know, I was over carry that over as a trainer because just because of the things I went through, uh, experience I went through in fighting. So, you know what I'm saying? My job is to make this man's job easy. That's good. That's good. Now, I mean, there, there's a bunch of you guys that uh, are kind of uh, share the Olympic Brotherhood. You know, it's, it's kind of a, a special bond. Would you not agree? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, it's weird. It's like when you see local fighters, you mention Olympics, like some of them really don't pay attention to it, but the ones that do are like, oh, yeah, like that's a language yeah. that we could talk. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's a brotherhood. It's a, a, a bond. It's um, just to, you know, I mean, you got every four years, you got 12 guys. It's 200,000 people boxing. And you got 12 guys, one in each weight class. Yeah. And you, you was number one. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, how many people, number one in, in America at the time? So, yeah. you, you, you know, and you respect, you always look up to the class before you. You know what I'm saying? 76, 80 look to them. Man, it's 76. Look to them. Right, you know what I'm saying? Greatest boxing, te- back, yeah, yeah, I, best yeah, Olympic team yeah. in the history ever. Without, without, without a doubt. Yeah. Five gold medals. Uh, I think a silver and a bronze. Um, you know, 84 get a lot of respect, but uh, once I became an Olympian, I looked at that team different. I'm like, they didn't fight who I fought, so I can't look at them the same. I respect yeah. them. Uh, they had uh, 10 gold medals. I think oh, the nine gold medals, a uh, bronze and a silver, and one one guy didn't, didn't medal. But, uh, you know, it was so many. The, the, the top yeah. countries wasn't there, so I can't look at them the same. Which, but they turned out they had six... World champions and pros, but uh, you know, you know, if you if you fighting Cuba, Germany, yeah. Germany and Russia, and they not, I can't look at them the same. Yeah, mm-hmm. Sean, did you ever fight a Cuban? No, I never fought a Cuban. I, man, have you ever thought about going there to train just to kind of see their system? Um, yeah, I thought about it. I mean, that's some, somebody always go to Cuba, some Dominican Republic, Puerto Rico. Everybody want to go there. Yeah. Yeah, I, the Cuban system. Like my tell you and I have done some deep dives just talking. I about. mean, you know, you, you got guys who they can't turn pro. Yeah. So they fighting three, four, five, six hundred fights against U.S. kids, kids. with seventy, eighty. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So it's it's. I mean, this and I don't take none away from Cuban fighters. They great amateurs. All you gotta do is look at the the guys who defected and turned pro. It's not really that many great Cubans, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I just let you know, it's not they not like they better than us. They just had a better system. Mm-hmm. They stayed they stayed amateur longer. Yeah, more experience. Right, they had more yeah. experience. They was grown men. You got 27, 28 grown men fighting eighteen year olds. They're supposed to win. So your sparring partner, uh, Warren Rashi, he fought uh Nordine Ubali for a world title. Did you watch that fight? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I watched it. So like Nordine, like anytime you tie up with the guy. He always gets two punches in on the break. Give it like they break him up. He always gets two in. How do you think you'd you'd match up with Nordine? Um, I didn't I didn't see much in him like that. He looked strong. That's about it, really. But um, all he really threw was um a double jab. You know what? I think hand. I watched their Olympic fight. I think I watched their Olympic gold medal fight. I think that's what it was. Or not the gold medal. Their Olympic bout is every time the referee came in, break, 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 and you know they'd step back and he'd get two or three in at the end. Is that the one you said? B. Rose, Rashi, yeah, but yeah, he got he tired. Him. Yeah, he beat he him in. Uh, he beat him in Olympics. He beat right. him in Olympics yeah. also. I was at that fight, at the one at the Olympics in London. Um, yeah, it was and, in London. And, and, and yeah. Rashi, Rashi was winning the fight. Um, and I think um, his contacts came out of something like yeah, he got real bad eyes. He can't okay. see see uh, that good. I think his contacts came out in that fight, and after that, it kind of just kind of went, went down. Yeah, it did, it had, man, that's the game, man. That's the game. So, uh, Jeff Mason, Nate Jones, you got a relationship with them as well. Yeah, yeah, it's real close like all with the them. local All-Stars, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I, uh, I'm, I'm assuming Nate probably held pads for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nate uh, used to train me. Then I, I've been to that gym three or four times, and he doesn't take those things off. I don't know how <laughs> he does it, man. That takes a, that's, that's a lot of wear on a body. Yeah, it does. It does. He's he, he getting the ring barefooted. Work the pads. <laughs> Yeah, I, it, you know, it's crazy. It's like, and he's good at it, though. Like, I, if he's part of team, uh, the money team. Uh, yeah. He goes out there and trains with Mayweather. gets Mayweather ready for right. his fights. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Have you, have you traveled to train anywhere? Or you, have you just stayed local? Because that Chicago scene doesn't really get as much respect as a, as a lot of yeah, other Yeah, I mean, like I said, I've been boxing since I was eight, so I've been everywhere. I've been to Vegas, New York, 
whoever you name, DC. I've trained there before, so. No, oh, that's good. That's that is good. Pretty cool. So now you've come from a boxing family as well. Your father was a military fighter. No, my grandfather. Was it your grandfather? My grandfather okay. was in the military, and my uncle boxed in the penitentiary. Did he? Yeah. <laughs> I heard he's got a you know, a win over somebody. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He beat Roger Mayweather in uh, in the penitentiary. That's crazy, man. Hey, you know, good victory to have. Uh, yeah, right, right, right. That's, a, that's some bragging rights right there. Yeah, they man. Michigan. Yeah, yeah. I've been in the penitentiary. What was it? I didn't know. I know senior got locked up. I didn't know. Right. No, you know, back in them days, they used to bring they they bring the free guys free in. free guys to fight the yeah. the inmates. Oh my oh, god, it doesn't yeah. even sound legal. Yeah. Yeah. So that's remember James Scott, the heavyweight. Oh yeah, I mean like heavyweight. He yeah, fought yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 Mustafa. Okay, uh, uh, what's Mustafa name? Mom, yeah, yeah, it was yeah. he fought Eddie Mustafa in uh, in the prison. Uh, James Scott was on CBS a few times fighting in Rahway Prison. So the guys going and fight, you know, fight. Uh, the prison, so yeah. I know they got to be kind of intimidating though to be a going in the inside and fighting the prisoners. Like I know they got to be kind of yeah, mental that's, though. That's some bragging rights right there, though, man. I mean, yeah. Dude, yeah, if you're locked up and you got you know a W over Roger, Ooh. you're getting everybody's tear yeah. tots. Tear <laughs> <laughs> tots. Oh, the commissary, man. Oh, the <laughs> <laughs> nah, that's cool. That's cool. So this fight coming up August 31st. Mm-hmm. You got any predictions? I'm gonna win. <laughs> I mean, we like going it. eight rounds. Like we going eight yeah. rounds. Um, I'm gonna try to break him down and try to break his will. I know I'm not the biggest puncher, so my my job is to break him down mentally and physically, and um, and try to get him out of there in the later rounds. That's good. That's good. Now, what's your what's your go to weight class in terms of being a fan? It's a hot time for boxing right now. What you mean? Like, is there a certain weight class that you like watching outside of your out of your own? Man, one forty-seven. Forty-seven division. Yeah, come on, man, that's the hottest division of boxing right now. Oh, your buddy's in one forty-seven, huh? Yeah, man, I got I got a couple, man. Then I got the one fifty-four. You know, I'm in uh, Erickson Lubin. So, <clears throat> Spence uh, is fighting Porter coming up. You you obviously mentioned that you were roommates with Porter. What's your prediction on that? <sighs> that's a tough one, but uh, it's 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 a tough challenge for Porter. He's it getting is. challenged. But it's not it's not an easy fight for Earl though. No, it's, no. it's not going to be an easy Porter, fight at bro. all. There, there, there right. is no easy fight at 147. No, right. <laughs> like anybody who's fighting 147 is not getting an easy fight. Right. Even Ugas when he came in, like Sean Porter's like, all right, who's this guy? We were asking, who's this guy? Yeah, right. we couldn't he find sh- any video on him. He showed the world who he was. Now right. he's like a top seven welterweight. Right. Yeah, after one fight, it's, it's not going to be an easy fight at all. Um, Sean Sean is going to push Earl. He's going to push him to the limit, especially with his aggressiveness, but. Earl got the edge. He's, he's got the. He's a high volume puncher. Yeah, you know and he's and, strong and he's strong. You know? Yeah. So it's it's gonna be a tough challenge for for Porter, I think. But yeah, you know, I'm rooting for Porter, man. I, I do. Really, you gotta go with Porter. You know, I, I am. It's gonna be tough though. But I mean, it's one of those that just take my money. It's gonna be entertaining. Too. <laughs> it's gonna. <laughs> it's gonna. It's, gonna, man, it's gonna be I'm entertaining. Buying that thing. Every if that fight's on every weekend, they're getting my money every mm-hmm. single time, man. Right. And then you box. You, you sparred with Keith Thurman. Yeah, yeah, I sparred with Keith Thurman before. Long, how long ago was that? This was like 2013, 2014. Were you guys even close in weight? Not at all. I was like <laughs> 120. This man was like 170. He didn't but, take it easy on but you he either, was, did he? He was, he was sparring somebody, right? Then his pops was like, his pops, his pops was like, you want to get in there? At first, I'm like, I'm like, I'm thinking he's joking. I'm like, man, I'm not going to get in there with him. Then Keith said something to me. I was like, man. Well, give me my stuff, man. So I got in there with him. You know, he wasn't trying to kill me or nothing, but he did. He hit me with a bite. So I was like, it ain't hurt me like that. But I was like, okay, he is strong. Yeah, so, that's that's his thing. He's a he's a heavy but, hitter. But even even Keith, he said he said, man, this he a, he a hard dude to hit because he, he I mean, besides that one little body shot he hit me with, he wasn't able to hit me. When no oh, jabs yeah, yeah. or anything. I mean, you're, you're a little dude. You're fast, man. That's your speed, you know? Speed versus power in there. What did you think of this fight with Pacquiao? What was your opinion of it? I think he did good. Um, Do you think he, he, started off, he started off a little bit too late. I think in the first round, he was winning. He was winning the first round, but he got caught and he I got dropped. And I think that drop, I think, I think when he got dropped, he didn't get his wits back until about the fifth, sixth round. I think so. So he lost all them rounds before then, and then um, I think he, took he, was he was so. coming back. He was coming back. He was coming back into the fight. Then he got hit with that body shot. Man, did you see how did the fight IQ of him taking his mouthpiece out and kind of you know jogging around catching his win? Right. Like 
that fight IQ is through the roof when you're doing stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. he, he's been known to been hurt by body shots before. Pacquiao called him a good body shot and it, it uh, gave him uh, the lead back in the fight, you know what I'm saying? Because Keith was taking over and that, that changed the fight. Uh, that gave Pacquiao a round that, that Keith needed and, um, you know, with the knockdown. I think I read Freddie said uh, if, it, if we don't get the knockdown and that body shot is a draw. So, yeah, I believe that. I, I, I can go with that. I think the scorecards or, were a little or, or, further. Or without the without the without the knockdown or the body shot, Keith Keith win that fight. But I think it was like one. Was it like one? That's three points. That three. That's three yeah. points. Yeah, a knockdown and 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 a round. That's three points. So it changed a, a, a lot. So that's just like Marcus Brown and Pascal Saturday. You know, uh-huh. Marcus Brown clearly was the better fighter. Clearly won in every round, but he got dropped three times. Yeah, no, it's and then then got hit, but right afterwards, and they had to stop the fight off a head. But so now they just go off of. I thought he was fading in that fight too, though. Like I think his confidence level, like he, he was double the punches landed, but when he got hit, he got hit. Cause you know Pascal is a strong fighter. He's physically strong, but he didn't have the skills to nah. to be in there with Marcus. But uh. he had a puncher's chance, and every time Marcus would throw, and he would have that hand down, Pascal would just come over with an overhand and. Uh. Catch him. When a boxer started to brawl, that's when he got in trouble. Yeah. You know? It's but anytime he stayed on the outside and just boxed him, it was an easy night for you know, him. It was all night. You know, I, I, I attribute the same thing with like Anthony Joshua and Ruiz. It's like all he had to do, all right, it might not have been exciting. No. Just sit back. I think I think, I think with a, something like that, I think um, Marcus got too, too confident and got too comfortable and thought it was just going to be an easy night and got a lack of days cool and got caught. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's, that's why I, it might sound crazy, but it's why it's, it's it's good to get caught and hurt early in your career, so you know how to deal with it. Because you know you got to come back, and it's a long fight. You got to be prepared for it. But uh, you know, being knocked down three times, like your man, your confidence start. You know, you start uh, second guessing yourself. Yeah, but he bounced back though, yeah, man. Yeah. Like he really did. And when he came out for the well, next he's younger, round, younger, younger, stronger guy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Younger, but uh, like I said, get dropped three times. And, um, and Pascal, I think he was from like, Canada, right? He's yeah, like yeah, French yeah, Canadian. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was wild, man. Like, you got an opportunity to make some more money. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Everybody wrote him off and then give him a chance. And, but it's boxing. Anything they have a happen. rematch. Oh, they got to be a rematch. Yeah. Yeah. Anything can happen. They're Anything can happen in boxing. No, for sure. Anything can happen in boxing. So, so what, what is your goals with Sean in regards to getting like having him level up and, and fights and stuff like that? Okay, like I said, we we fighting August thirty first, eight rounder in Minnesota, PBC. Right? Is that televised or does it swing? We know when we, we get there. We, get we know when we get there. So um, we got two different stations showing it: Fox Sports Two, Fox Sports One. Mm-hmm. Is Boom Boom going to be out there? I, don't, I mean, he worked for them, so well, maybe, maybe, hopefully. But uh, do, he does a great job. Yeah, yeah. Boom Boom is a great fighter uh, with a lot of great experience. So yeah. you know, but um, we you know we fight August thirty first. Try to come back, you know, October September. You know, try to fight once or twice before the end of the year. Uh huh. If we go to this eight rounds, he get that under his belt, his confidence. He know in the back of his mind he could do it. So then we, you know, do one more, then we go for 10 next year. You know what I'm saying? Get a, be a, a main event fighter. And after we go 10, you know, so we ready for a world title shot. But guys, you know, one thing we learned about boxing, guys with the 100, 200 fights don't need 30, 30, 20, 30 pro fights. No. Rashi Warren, uh, it's a lot of guys. Lomachenko. 12, 13, 14 yeah. fights. Lomachenko is different, a little bit different. Yeah, 400 amateur fights, yeah. so it's a little bit different, but... uh. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, Sean got everything. So you're trying to throw him a wolf eventually, sometime soon. Yeah, huh? we, yeah, we, yeah, we got to pick up. You know what I'm saying? We want to be a star. You know what I'm saying? We want to make money. <laughs> so we, we got to fight the best out there. So um, like I said, keep fighting better opponents. Um, get our name out there. Get people behind us. And um, we say get a ten round fight. And after that, we after we win that, you know what I'm saying? We got the world title shot. Yeah, you know, with your weight class at 118, like we. 118 pounds, like we've talked about, there's the options are hard. So, like, when you get picked up with a company like PBC, man, that makes your life a lot easier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it does. And <laughs> then they hopefully get a champ to come over and fight in America. 
Because, yeah. you know what I'm saying, nine times oh. out of ten, we might have to go. Oh, I go to Japan. Tour, like, <laughs> nine times out of ten, we had to go, you know what I'm saying, leave the country. Oh, I go to Japan. You're man. talking about uh, anyway, yeah. huh? Hey, man, wherever the money. The, the monster. Wherever the money take me. <laughs> so, so, you know, there was, there was a rumor that uh, the guys from uh, the UFC were talking with Eddie Hearn about uh, purchasing PBC and getting involved with that. I, I'll tell you this right now. If they do that, the first thing that's going to happen is that they're going to start putting their own belt around people, and I think they should. PBC does enough events. Like, I don't know why they don't have their... I don't like a lot of different alphabet belts, but PBC could do one. Would you not agree? Come on, Montel. I mean, it's so watered down now. I mean, you know, it's... Look how many fights they're doing. Yeah, but to come up with a, a PBC belt, I mean, that's, you know... Really? I mean, uh, yeah, it's, it's too many titles. Yeah, that's that's kind of cheesy. Yeah, you think it's, so? It's, it's Am many, I off? It's too many belts, you know what I'm saying? Uh, okay, uh, but, I, but I, those belts don't because it's like, organization to back it. And, and how many... Because... I feel like it's already too many belts with, with within one organization. How you right, got like the right. WBC interim or, right, or you know, silver yeah. gold. Yeah. Yeah. You, you eliminate all yeah. of that. We're just doing a PVC belt over here. No? I mean, am I off on that? I'd buy into it. I really would. Uh, I don't think. I don't think. PBC's got the roster. They got the stable. They could do it. You know, well, they're it, doing like uh, they had dog bowl versus. But they, they, just, well, they just got, got done with WO. They're not doing. They're not. Yeah, I don't think they. Not they're not doing. WO they no. just dropped the WO. So it, I don't know what happened. Is, isn't Canelo getting stripped of a belt now too? You know, yeah, stripped of the IBF. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, it's, it's such a joke, man. It, like that's why I like the UFC because there's one belt. There's it's the only alphabet that matters right, is UFC right, right, right around your waist. I, I think so. PBC's got the money. They've got the. Yeah, you know, the TV time they're on and almost they once the a week. They got the fighters. They, they you know, definitely got you know, the fighters. Like if you got if you got a PBC 147 welterweight champion. Sean that, Porter. I mean, that I mean that means something. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> Say I, Sean Porter. <laughs> I mean, it would be. I mean, he just beat Ugas. I mean, all right, there. There's yeah. your title. Now he's fighting Earl Spence. Well, yeah. Is that on Showtime or is that PBC? Um, I think it's Fox Pay Per View. Is it okay? There you go. That, that's a legit fight. Uh, I mean, I, no disrespect to the yeah. three letter organizations. You know what I mean? But it's just like, <laughs> dude, it's like when, a shake when you're down trying, sometimes. When you're trying to keep up with it, you're like, oh my god, man. Right. It's all it's all about the sanction fees. I mean. Uh, it's, it's all when, it you get, is, when you man. get to a certain level, you don't even need a belt. Canelo don't need a belt. He don't no. need the IBF. He he's the star. Yeah. Floyd Mayweather don't need it. Pan, Manny Pacquiao don't need a belt. They they the star. So I mean, you know, some a lot of guys don't mind getting stripped because they they don't have to pay the sanction fee. Right. Yeah. Well, Cotto pays. did that. Cotto kind of was one of the guys that started that too. Just like man, take the belt. Yeah, right, you get. Yeah, you would, uh, right, I don't need. The I'm not giving you two hundred right, grand. Man. Right, right. Keep it. <laughs> Pay the sanctions fees for what? I mean, you, you the best, baddest man on the planet. Everybody knows that. And so. the more belts you get, the more sanctioned fees you're. That's you're what I'm paying. saying. So it's like you don't even want to be. That's, like, that's what I'm saying. A million in a hole, you know, at that's the end of the saying. year yeah. for holding four or five belts. Right. That's what I'm saying. So that's what. It's not really. Of course, uh, BC, BA, and IBF top three. Um, WO is um, like in the eighties and nineties. WO wasn't looked as a world champion, but now right. it is. Well, I mean, we got a lot of belts, a lot of world champions, but uh, certain weight classes just just the fighter is a star. You know what I'm saying? Like Floyd. Well, who cares? Nobody knew what boy belt Floyd had because he was it's Floyd star. Mayweather. Right, yeah. he was Floyd Mayweather, Manny Pacquiao, Canelo. You know what I'm saying? So the thing about the heavyweight division is we got to see. Who you know? So you got Wilder, Fury, Joshua. Now you got Ruiz. The real world title uh, for heavyweight boxing is is Wilder and Fury. Right. Yeah. In my eyes, Fury is the world champion. Definitely. He beat the man. He beat the man. Right. Yeah. He, he beat the man. Lost. So right. So you know what I'm saying? Joshua beat Klitschko after Fury did. So Fury is the world champion in my eyes. Um, I love to see him in on the bronze bomber. I think Wilder got uh, Ortiz. Fury been picking a lot of easier opponents. Wilder fighting Ortiz, and I think to him and Fury going to fight. Joshua got the rematch with Ruiz, and it's going to come together, and we're going to see who the real uh, who the, uh, I think real Joshua man takes that. I, I think Joshua Joshua takes a rematch, but it's going to be boring. You know, I I, think, well, I'm saying I think he yeah. takes his belts back. I think he'll be, be I mean, you know. Yeah, he's got to fight a boring fight to win that. You know, he gets caught in a brawl. The crazy thing stuff, is, man. I wasn't surprised when I seen that Luis beat him. Because I seen Luis fight. Like, I seen him fight on one of the cards. I'm like, 
Dang, this little dude, dude, we fat Mexican that. dude could fight. <laughs> well, he's got yeah. quick hands and he hits hard. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. like, and he throw a lot of punches. And he's got a huge amateur career. Right, right. right. I didn't know. I didn't know he was a Mexican Olympian. I didn't know yeah. that. Yeah. He's legit. In fact, you know, like what two weeks before we were saying, like, you know, you got Fury, you got Wilder, and and then you have a Joshua, First. which they're kind of they're playing hide and seek from one another. Uh. Pick one guy that's going to lose his his tune up fight. He called it. He's like, man, Ruiz is winning that fight. Right. Yeah. So, you know, we, boxing is beautiful right now. It's in good hands. Uh, Anytime the heavyweight division is hot, the right. rest Let's of say it, it Boxing ball is a heavyweight division. Yeah. Just that Floyd kept it afloat until mm-hmm. the heavyweight division came back, and we got stars in the heavyweight class. You know what I'm saying? And it's, uh, it's great. Like I said, this boxing is in the best shape it's been in years right now. Yeah. Real, it's been real fun to watch. Yeah. yeah. Is, is there anybody that you like to watch, Sean? Out the, I mean, outside of your own fights, is there anybody that you follow? Uh, like I said, like um, Earl Spence, Erickson Lubin, um, Gary Russell, Javante Davis. You know, mainly all I mean, the Davis people. Has step mainly up, all man. the people I grew up with. Yeah. Yeah. I watched them. All the people that I grew up with. Javante's got to step look, up. Look man. how we're being impressed with who. Huh? Who, are, who are we talking about? Canelo. Like, oh man, yeah, yeah, Canelo. Like, that's... Can fight like man, man. Canelo, Canelo, the the coldest dude to me right now in boxing. Man, he, that man, that man can fight. Did you think he beat Triple G in that first fight? Not the first fight. I didn't think so either. But the second fight, yes. Yeah. Canelo... The first fight, I either it was Triple G or a draw, and the second fight, it was either Canelo or a draw. I agree with right. you. I agree right. with you. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. You know, and then they're waiting for Triple G to get old. That's what they did. <laughs> Back in the day, Evander Holyfield was my number one guy. But I could go to a fight and watch him, and even if he lost, I was impressed. That's Canelo now. No matter, here, okay, uh, you want to say Lara, you want to say uh, Trout, Trout, you want to say um, Triple G. I still was impressed with Canelo. Regardless, he a, he a great fighter. I love watching him fight. Yeah, yeah. He's the, he's the slickest Mexican I've seen in my life. Really? He's the sickest Mexican I've ever seen in my life. That says a lot, man. Man, he... he I mean, because I thought Chavez... Who the Caesar Chavez was... Well, he, Chavez really, ate, he really he, wasn't He was slick. a slick, dude. He ate punches and gave right. punches, he, man. Yeah, he wasn't... A lot of people say Salvador Sanchez, but... Uh, he... No, I've never seen a Mexican sit on a rope and slip punches. Never seen that. And I saw Canelo do that against Trout almost 10 years ago. You know what I'm saying? He's still on top. Yeah, and he the, he the man. He, he getting better and better every time we see him fight. Now, now you know, there's there's been like a, a rash of failed drug tests in boxing. Was it was it White just failed? Yeah, in in Europe and Canelo failed a couple too. Uh, Big Baby, Big Baby, Big Baby. Big Baby. Yeah, Canelo yeah. had Canelo had Clint Buterol. Man, dude, they sold Clint Buterol over months. the counter. Right, Mexico. he was suspended for six months. He came back, tested clean, fought Triple G. So I mean, it, it is what it is. I mean, uh, you know, it's nobody that you're gonna tell me. If they were cheating, I'm gonna be surprised about it. nobody. So Especially it's just, when you're talking about that that money. You right, know, the guy across right, from you is definitely right. on something. You know, if they're doing state testing and only right, state testing, right. you gotta assume who you're fighting is probably right, right. Well the thing is getting an edge. If you don't have nothing to hide, why won't you do Vada testing? Why won't why won't you do random testing? If you if you don't have nothing to hide, both guys should do random testing because then you you know he not cheating. You know yeah, what I'm there was no Vada testing in uh in Pacquiao. That's what I'm saying. So that's that's a red flag to me. For you not to do for Vada testing and then look like a million dollars, something ain't right. Man, you know what? You know what's kind of crazy? It's like when uh, McGregor, they were negotiating McGregor and, uh, and Mayweather. Essentially, they came to the table and they said, Dana White's like, Floyd was slick. He, got, he gave McGregor six weeks to get ready for a 10-round fight. That's impossible if you've never done that before. That's, yeah, it's all game plan. See, but when they went to the table, okay, well, the UFC thought he, they had him cornered. They're like, okay, well, we're going to do Vada or Wada te- or USADA testing. Hmm. So, like, we're going to give you a little time to get whatever it is out of your system. And then once you sign this contract, we'll start it, and then we'll discuss a date. Mayweather goes... Well, I don't even take protein. Okay, I'm going to sign this now. We're fighting in six weeks. Here you go. Wait, yeah. It checkmated them. They thought for right. sure. Like, even if you take a couple aspirins or you're using IVs, like you, yeah. you're popped. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I used right. to do. I used to do USADA, man. It's they definitely. It's legit, right? So Mayweather, that guy's been clean his entire career. The way he signed that piece of paper, Dana White's giving interviews, going, 
man, I, I, I didn't expect that. You know, it was it was a chess match, and and Floyd had the trump card. Like he just, you but know, he, he's sad. You know, what I'm saying he's fighting, coming to his sport. So, but with the, with the uh, body testing, whenever they do random tests, when they just show up to your house, when you don't know when they coming, man, we know a couple people that's, got that's popped gonna, with that's, that. That's gonna keep that's gonna keep that's gonna keep it clean. Yeah, you know, they uh, a guy that fought for me a couple times, Neil Magny. We we've had him on a few times, and they grabbed him at a Home Depot. They had him wash his hands. This dude's clean yeah. some of that soap at Home Depot test positive for what it is he tests positive for in his urine test mm. and it was like such a small tiny mm. micro amount that like this mm. last test should have picked it up if it was a legit right. like positive hit and it was just like man it, and I go to a Home Depot bathroom I come out I test it positive for yeah. a, and I, it's crazy because it's like with, with them type of way USADA and all and VADA you have to let them know everywhere you're going and every so like if they want to come see you, they know where you at like mm. or like if you don't let them know, you can be and I didn't like I live in Chicago, I could be in California. If I didn't tell them that I was going to California for a certain that's a strike. All right. All right. If they come to your house and you're not there, they give you sixty minutes. If you're not there in sixty minutes, oh. that's a fail. Jesus. Right. You get three strikes, you see if you, if you got like like a girlfriend, you ain't trying to stay at her house. That's a good one. No, man, I get drug tested. I got to go home. You don't get it. You know, I'm a professional athlete. Like, it's like, it's like every, time, clean, every time I travel somewhere, I had to text that I had to text that number and tell them such and such. I'm how many times to... have you been tested that way? About like, three. how many times have you taken it? Like, three times. That's still, it's like, be like I was in high school. I was in high school, and they, they came knocking on my door at 5 o'clock in the morning before I went to school. And then I was... I was finna be like, I was finna be petty. It was like, you know what? I'm finna take y'all to school with me. Oh, that'd be great. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now y'all follow me around in school yeah. all day. Yeah, cause but you I, can't pee yet. Just follow me. No, I'm yeah, because they got to go with you the whole, they got to be with you that whole day until you, yeah. you until you, what you call it. Have a seat. <laughs> I was finna have them come to school with me, but I was like, nah. So where me. did you go? I mean, are you a Southsider or? Yeah, Southsider. Well, where did you go to high school, if you don't mind me asking? CBS. Okay, so you're legit from Chicago. Yeah. That bugs me, man. When people say from Chicago. You're from like Hinsdale. Yeah. <laughs> nah, I'm from the city. Yeah, I'm from over east. So, how was that like growing up, like with your boxing career, with the other kids at school? Were they uh, would they come support you at your fights, or was it just kind of nah, you doing a, your thing? Yeah, it was me doing my thing. I have a um, few friends that support me. To uh, even day. back then, when you were fighting, wow, you were fighting so many times. Though, and man, I was young, and then I never fought in Chicago when I was an amateur. I always fought, and I only fought in national tournaments only. Like I got to a point where I fought too many times. I was like, I'm not fighting in no show fights. I'm not doing none of that. If it ain't a national tournament, I'm not fighting. So it and, got to now, that point. Who was your toughest amateur fight? Rashid. Was it? And Emilio Sanchez, this kid named Emilio Sanchez from California. Is, is he is he in the pro ranks now as yeah. well? Your weight class. I think he felt like 122, 126. Okay. Do you think you could drop down a weight class, being that you're so like so close to weight already? To 115? Yeah. I think I can, but that like that that little three pounds will kill me. I'll be. Cause I, I mean, I don't think I don't think, I don't think I don't think it'll kill me. I just think that <laughs> I would have to change my my eating habits. Cause uh, at yeah. 18, I eat whatever I want to eat. Your still. coach is saying it's happening. <laughs> he, he got enough back fat. He, he can do it. <laughs> <laughs> we got down to 17 without trying. But you get a one pound weight allowance. Right. Oh yeah, not not for the title. Yeah, yeah, not for the title. Not for title. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's different. You know Maybe for mandatory, then go down to fifteen for the title, win, and then go back up to eighteen. Hey, that'd be a nice move, man. I think I think it'd be the, for legacy. Legacy wise, I think it'd be great. Win a one fifteen pound title. Then he gonna go on that fight as a puncher. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, three was. pounds make a big difference. Those guys look small at fifteen. So hey, yo, you'd probably be fighting guys your size. I'd rather fight somebody taller. That's because that's what you're used to, right? Yeah, I don't want to no. fight nobody my height. <laughs> <laughs> fight somebody arm length with me. Nah, I'd rather punch up. Yeah, yeah. So, d- did you guys ever work out at the Gary PAL back in the day? Where man, Freddie and all those guys used to work out at? I went there. Did I train? The who did we go to Gary PAL with? I ain't never heard of that before. The I went there, Police Athletic League? I went there once. I mean, I heard of PAL, but I never heard of the Gary PAL. Uh, yeah, I had to be trained. Yeah, I trained. I went there for what one time, and uh, they said man, Fred was gonna be there, but I don't think he was. I went there one time. Yeah, I must have went to Spa. I can't remember. You know what, man? I was there uh, a couple months ago, and it's closed. Like it's all boarded up. Oh, yeah, it's, it's all, too bad. Yeah, 
everything is still in there. It's like a, it's it's it's, it's like a museum, man. Like no, the heavy bags are hanging, the ring is still up. For uh, it, all you, you got pictures on the wall of you there. Like Marty McGarry's got a picture on the wall there. That's cool. Yeah, I mean it was just it's, I mean it's all filled with water and yeah. garbage. But I just kind of went there to, you know, relive some memories, and it's just abandoned. Yeah, that's too bad. That's too bad. I went there one time. I ain't gonna lie. I didn't even know Chicago had a pal. Do they have a pal? Never seen them. No. We always had to do our own thing when we went to the pal. Normally, other when we used to fight in the pal, other states they used to fight out of that pal, like Dallas pal and all that type of stuff. Mm-hmm. And they used to get sponsored. You know, the pal they sponsor you to go to the pal tournament, but uh-huh. we never had that. We always had to find our own way to get around. So, what's the hardest thing for you right now, being a professional fighter? Right now is maintaining <laughs> yeah. a stable life, you know, just focusing on just boxing only and, you know. Well, a stable life, that's not easy in Chicago, man. I mean, it's, I mean, it, it gets hairy quick, man. You yeah. know, especially when jealousy comes around. I mean, I know, you, okay, your second time on TV, people automatically think you're a millionaire. <laughs> I mean, they do, right. You're yeah, right. I'm far from. Yeah, you know, you're, fight, you're fighting for airfare. You know, you're just yeah. trying to build that record up. Right, I'm mm-hmm. fighting. Feed my son yeah. <laughs> now. That's the only thing now. That's good. Now, do you have any brothers or sisters? Yeah, I have four brothers. Are you the only boxer? Yeah, my oldest brother used to box when he was a kid, but um, he he quit boxing and um, he was a football player. Okay, real good. All state, all state football player. So. Through CVS? No, nah, he went to Hubbard High School. Hubbard. Okay, okay. So, so Montel, you fought on the uh, the Jirov, uh Tony undercard. Yeah, I don't want to talk about that. Yeah. Okay, well, no, I was just playing. What's up with Jirov Tony, man? We we talk, that's my one of my favorite oh, all time fights. Oh man, uh, you know, I was in camp with Jirov, but you know, of course, I fought James. I've been in the ring with both of them. Uh, James just turned back the clock that night and looked like the old James. And uh, man, that took was care a good of fight, man. man. Dropped Jirov and um. Jirov kept coming. Yeah, he kept coming, coming but he, coming. he never kind of was the same after that. That was that was a that was a huge fight for um for both of them. Yeah. It um it um reinvented James Tony and um Jirov kind of started going backwards after that. But uh, it was a great fight. I, I always wish you did a legendary nights over that fight, just because of all the drama involved. Just I mean, it's it's an emotional fight to watch, man. Yeah, it was, it was a great fight. Great fight, James Tony. Like I said, he turned back the clock and, and looked look marvelous. Yeah. Um, pound for pound, he a dinosaur. Um, to win the world title, 160, 68, uh, cruiserweight, you know what I'm saying? Uh, and fought heavyweight and beat, he, he actually beat John Ruiz, but uh, he failed the test. But, uh, um, always one of those. He, um, hell of a fighter, you know what I'm saying? One of yeah. the greatest fighters wow. ever. First belt Hall of Famer, man. Yeah. You yeah, know, yeah. I mean, yeah. generationally, like, incredible. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. He, uh, He's one of the most respected fighters. He's my favorite fighter. Um, I met him when I got back from the Olympics, and it blew my mind. And he actually called me. But Jackie Callan called me, and I stayed at James' house for about a week. You know, he was going to be my manager. But things didn't work out, and um, I went back home. But uh, I told him he was a scary guy. Yeah, he was. He um. He, intimi- he, he had a, a huge intimidation factor. What? He was one of the guys that... Man, I don't care, and like he really right. didn't care, right. and he would just plow through people. Right, right. And then, I mean, it was just like, psh, right. you know, like right. this is nothing. Yeah, he I, uh, he was a he was a throwback, you know big time throwback, throwback fighter, big time from the twenties. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, he he was a man. He was a man. Um, great fighter. You know when he came in shape, like I mean that that was it used to drive me crazy. He come in out of shape. Mm. He'd fight a super stud, and he'd still win, mm. and it just kind of encouraged him to kind of continue his bad habits. Probably so. Probably so. He he was so good. He was too good for his own. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Too good for his own self. But uh, uh, just, you know, his conditioning and, um, you know, weight gain. I mean, he told me that he had fought, played, uh, I think, quarterback or played football in high school. He was 200 pounds. So he trained down to 160. And, um, that takes a toll on Right, right. So he told me he was 200 pounds in high school. Trained down to 160, won the title. Didn't stay too long. Moved up to 68. And then he got to a point where he couldn't stay there. But he had he fought Roy for the money, but he wasn't himself. So 
Yeah, he moved up to 75. But yeah. Um, yeah, he great fighter. Man, so. phenomenal fighter. Yeah. 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 No, for sure. So, I don't know. I mean, do you, do you guys got anything else or what, man? I mean, we've been going over <sighs> an hour. I mean, what's how about this? Windy City Gym. What do you guys got going on? Um, Windy City Boxing Club. I opened up in my father's. Clarence Griffin, Windy City Boxing Club. Yeah. He had it from 73 to 83. He opened it up, and um, I, you know, saying I, I just wanted to keep his name, keep his name alive. You know, I want people to know who Clarence Griffin was. He died over thirty years ago, uh-huh. and um, he was he was an Olympic trainer as well. Didn't he? He was a U.S. Team, team trainer. Was it U.S. Team trainer? Yes, okay. U.S. Team trainer. Something like that. He um, like I said, he was U.S. Team trainer, national coach trainer for, mm-hmm. for Chicago. Um, I got a chance to meet uh, Tyrell Biggs and Pernell Whitaker and. All those guys, cause you know my father, um, you know Orlando Johnson, and um, uh, Johnny Williams. He was uh, his first fighter that was number one in the United States, mm-hmm. and he trained Al Evans, who knocked out Mike Tyson, in the amateur. So uh, you know my my father did pretty good um, in a short amount of time. Well, he was pretty well respected locally. I used yeah, to yeah, yeah. Park um, and they would talk like Larry about Larry Hazard told me that my father was a great man and. He remember him, and I thought that you know that meant a lot. He just told me that like a week ago, so that mean a lot. Uh, uh, Dan Duva, I think he passed away, but mm-hmm. he, I talked to him, and he said that uh, he had promoted the show that my father passed away. Okay. So you know she gave him a lot of love. So yeah, he's he was respected. Uh, Manny Manny Stewart respected him. Man, you know Manny Stewart was just a yeah. brilliant yeah, mind, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, great, great trainer, one of the greatest ever, pound for pound. So I was, you know, I I was. I did a lot, man. The Manny Stewart came to my father's gym, brought Tommy Hearns and um and um Mel McCorvey, you know, yeah, Ice Man McCorvey. I saw that picture. Yeah, so I, you I see I, this picture my tell stories. He's, he's looking all hard, and in the background you got Tommy Hearns just kind of yeah, looking at yeah. him. Uh, I, I was actually little, you got a little dude. <laughs> I was supposed to fight Tommy Hearns. I was gonna bring that picture to the fight so he could sign it, but uh, it didn't end up happening. But uh, I just I just had a a, a great back you know background. Yeah. Uh, me, and Muhammad Ali, at five years old, going to uh, to Michigan and go see Tommy Hearns fight the exhibition, and being around all those guys. Him coming to my father's gym, and it, you know, it was just you know, it was just meant meant to be. That's what I was meant to do in life. So, outside of Sean, do you have any other pro fighters in, in your uh, in your gym? Uh, I know you guys got a lot of sparring going on. We got yeah, we got a lot of sparring going on. Like an Anton Cobb, uh, uh-huh. we trying to go for the Olympic team. Okay, try to go. Um, we got um twenty seventh of September. Got a qualifier for the Eastern Trials. No, so, he just fought at uh, a couple weeks ago. No, nah. who did you have a couple weeks ago that just won a big tournament? Oh uh, well, that was uh my my one twenty three pounder. He okay. fought in the, um the King of the Jungle. King of the Jungle. So he yeah. won that. That was that was a yeah that was a big uh, confidence builder for him. So we. I mean, you know, I uh, I, I've been boxing box. I've been back in boxing three and a half years just because of Sean. I, I okay. not I left boxing alone. He came, asked me to train him. That's how I got back in the game. And uh, my gym will be two years old in December. So I, I'm just trying to go forward, move forward, and do big things. I got after school matters at my gym. I have a that's, nonprofit, that's cool. Windy City Boxing Youth Foundation, and I got a youth program, four thirty, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. So I'm I'm doing a lot with the kids. Are you helping out with that, Sean? Uh, I'll try to help as much as I can right now, but as far as like you know, training for fights and stuff like that, it'd be be kind of tough. But when he called me, when he called me though, when he called me, you know, I'm there for him. Yeah, when you're doing two a days, man, that's yeah. I mean, you know, that's that's a full time job, and um, you know, we we might train out of a 24 hour day, we might train four hours. We're gonna rest the other 20 because you got to rest. To let that body heal and do recover. you got sleep, man? Is your sleep? Do you go to bed late or do you go to bed early, man? I if I, I can't go to bed too early because I wake up in the middle of the night and I just be up all day. So I'm kind of like a night owl a little bit. Yeah, you're playing video games, man. That's what you're doing. <laughs> I, I saw him up at on Facebook at two thirty in the morning. <laughs> so I text him like, "What, what, what are you doing? Go, up? go to sleep." <laughs> right, I went to I went to bed too early and I woke up at two three in the morning and he nah, was see, up. See what happened yesterday after I came in from the gym. <laughs> My son wouldn't go to sleep, so my girl had called me, so I had to stay up with them until he went to sleep. It's not your fault. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I went to the bar and I was overserved. That ain't my fault. You know, they're supposed to be trained to figure that out. And then, especially like if I know my training schedule, like okay, I know I had sparring at four o'clock. So I'm like, oh man, I could sleep during the day. 
So what kind of break? Like when you take a break in between fights, I mean, do you do you drink at all? I mean, do you nope. at all? Nope. Zero. Zero. When was the last time you had a sip of alcohol? Never. Get out of here. I don't even know what it tastes like. Are you serious? Seriously. Where does that come from? My parents always just told me, especially my pops, you know, being an athlete, I don't supposed to do this, do that. You're supposed to drink and mess up your body, stuff like that. So I just always I took it to heat. You feel me? I'll tell you this right now. Two parent households, it's an unfair advantage. When you got a dad at home and a mom at home, it's like, it's unfortunate that people, not everybody has that opportunity. Yeah, it is. But when you do, man, it's like, I, I, I'm a single dad, you know, and it's, I don't have that for my kid, but I see like, man, I try to do everything I can to make sure she knows that that love is there, oh. man. Yeah. That's good. I'm glad you and your dad are tight. You know, Montel, you and your dad are real tight. Of course, of course. You know what I'm saying? He passed when I was going on 13 years old, and you know, it was hard on me. Uh, it it got worse. But you had as years went by. Yeah, I yeah. mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. Just to, like I said, just to be around Muhammad Ali at That's five insane, years old. Dude. You know what That's saying? nuts. You know what I'm I was around Muhammad Ali from five to thirteen years old. It was the greatest experience of my life. I remember all the stories. I remember everything. And uh, I, I got friends. Like, I didn't tell nobody nothing. Even when I started back boxing, I didn't tell nobody because I didn't think they were going to believe me. But when, when, when certain fighters found out about me and Muhammad, they were like, man, that's 20 wins right there. They're like, you won 20 fights because of that. And oh, I thought they was playing, but no. they were serious. They're like, man, man you been around Muhammad Ali made you win. And I, I'm like, okay. You know what I'm saying? Nah. I understand it now, you know what I'm saying? I mean, Sean, wouldn't you agree just being around it since you were little? Even if you're not in the gym 24-7, it just it sinks in. Like, right. it's just you're always thinking, you know? Yeah, that's the... I wish I was around somebody like that, man. How would I leave? Great, great experience in my life. You know what I'm saying? I, I won't trade it for nothing. Oh, how could you? I mean, yeah. you got a bunch of kid pictures with you running around man, with Ali. It was a, it was, it was a hell of... It was, it was a great experience. It was just, man, it was awesome. Yeah. It also gets you used to being on that big stage, too. Yeah. You yeah. know? I, I never, no, no matter what fight it was, I never was nervous. And people said, how come, you? I said, I was around, just, I was in the gym at one, two years old. I just never, I, I was too I, nervous or what? I mean, just, it's a fight, you know what I'm saying? And um, yeah. That's how the ice thing got so, he's like, he just so cool under pressure, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Eddie Fudge was like, man, this man like ice. Like, he ain't never nervous, but, never excited. Man, speaking of nicknames, Sean, you don't have one. We keep working on it. I'm working on it. I'm working <laughs> on it, man. Huh. I'm working on huh. it. Trying to come up with different different yeah. stuff, man. Different. <laughs> different. So, like, this fight, this fight, since, you know, my name's Sean Simpson, they've been using that SS stuff, but I think it's kind of, like, corny a little bit, so. Make it Sugar Sean, or I don't know, man. I'm going to use So Sharp this fight, so now, like, yeah. I got to stay sharp. This whole fight. Yeah. Yeah, well, you know, they say nicknames are given to you. Yeah. You know, you can't really come up with them yourself, that's for sure. Nah, but then, but then you also don't want to just take nobody else's nickname either, so well, that's not good thing. enough. Right. Good enough. Yeah. <laughs> well, maybe when he hits 115, Montel, you know, maybe that's that, that, that's something you guys could work on. <laughs> Man, you know, I, I come up with some more silly stuff <laughs> and tell him just to make him laugh. Some going to stick, though. <laughs> so, I, come up, I come up with a nickname for everybody. But it's just, you know, see, see what stick. That's good. That's mm-hmm. good. Okay. So, August 31st at PBC, man. Well, let's hope you're on TV. I mean, I, I honestly, we expect big things out of you. We were talking, like, the last couple days. Like, man, he's going to be fighting for a world title. We're getting him ahead of everybody. Yeah. Like, this dude's not going to be returning our phone calls in, like, three years. <laughs> yeah, get this interview in now. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get this one in. Who's this? Yeah. <laughs> man. I was well. You sure? Who? <laughs> sure? So, I appreciate it, man. Thanks for coming in. My right. group from Windy City Boxing. Do I give the address? 2150 South Canal Airport in the basement. Uh, 216 pound at the door. Come check us out. That's cool. Thanks, guys. Appreciate you guys joining us. Well, there you have it. Well, you got one former world champion sitting next to one blue chip prospect Mm -hmm. that's got a level of discipline that very few people in this world have. Yeah. And it's something you need in your blueprint when you want to be a champion. Yeah. You know, I mean, not very very many people have that. Mm -mm. Either you have it or you don't. It's not something you teach. Either it's you... Or it's not. You're right. And, you know, when you're that disciplined, let's, you know, boxing is, we've talked about, is about levels and gears. 
whatever level and gear you max out at, when you live that type of life, you kind of go up a few just on accident. Sure. Yeah, and, and he's got it. He's got it, man. Would you go see him fight? Absolutely. I, I, I hope man. that they televise it. I really, really you know do. You know what? It's in Minnesota. What is it, eight-hour drive? It's like a six-hour drive, and I got a hookup up there. So you get us there in five? A hundred. hundred percent. Yeah, I got a place for us to crash, too. <laughs> yeah, I'm cool. Yeah, no, I mean, if we could do it, man, I wouldn't mind going to check it out. Yeah, man. no, for sure. And you know, uh, he's someone we're going to have on again because he's... Before he gets too popular. Because <sighs> he's going to stop answering our phone calls. Man, dude, he's not even going to know who we are. Yeah, no. He's probably walking out of this house. He's like, man, screw those guys. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no, no good, good dude, though, Real man. good guy. Real, real good yeah, guy. I mean, real. you just see it, man. You really, really uh, do. Well, you know, the, Chicago boxing has got, like, a lot of layers. Mm-hmm. And because he's been fighting for so long, like, I know a lot of the layers. Maybe a lot of them know me. Most probably don't. But I definitely know who they are. Mm-hmm. So it's easy for me to kind of figure out who, like, a Sean Simpson is. You know, like, Montel and I, we go back years and, you know, we... Just chat a lot, stuff like that. So, um, I don't know. I see good things coming out of him. Oh yeah, soon. I'd say within the next twenty four months, he might have. Did some... you see the confidence Montel had? In oh him? yeah, oh yeah. He had, and he he let it be known. I I think he's right. When 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 he's riding with that type of confidence, I'm gambling with that. I'm well, rolling the dice with that. You got two multi generational boxers. Mm-hmm. Both with phenomenal support systems. Yeah, like both which is fa- important. Which both is their fathers important. were heavily involved in their life, as well as in the sport. You know, mm-hmm. it wasn't just you know a good guy that kind of helped you go through life. Like, no, no, no. These two individuals have lived boxing since they were children. Right. And Sean Simpson's newborn son, that's you know about three, four weeks old. Yeah. They've already got knitted boxing gloves for him. I know. Like, this isn't going anywhere. And, you know, in the podcast, we also mentioned uh, a name, uh, Jeff Mason, mm-hmm. Jazzy Jeff Mason. A lot of people probably haven't heard of him in his podcast. He's got a win over Angel Man Freddie. And his son, who, you know, he's not boxing anymore. His son, if just, I mean, same type of level in terms of skill as... Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, as Sean, but he just he doesn't have the discipline. Right. So you know, but you're talking like boxing royalty in terms of just like what's been ingrained in their genetic DNA. Right. Which is insane. Yeah. Yeah. Which I mean, insane. you're I mean, you're second generation baker. You get that. Yeah. You know, but can you imagine being around a fight game since you were two? Yeah. Now we're going to the gym, I'm... kid. I'm going to the yeah. gym, kid. He, just, no, he, no one's even telling you. You're just going there on your own. <laughs> you know what I mean? He, he just, it just sinks in. Yeah. It just sinks in. So I, I expect big things out of him. Yeah. You know, that was our goal. Yeah. Our goal was, hey, we got to find a blue chipper. Months ago, I tell you about Sean Simpson. I mean, he's obviously here today. Yep. And then a couple months later, hey, dude, I found a blue chipper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's like, good. Yeah, Come we're on, on the same page. Hey, yeah. dude, you got a scour, man. Yeah. You know? I, I really did enjoy the interview. Um. I think it, I, and there's not a lot on him. There isn't, and I think we got we squeeze as much as we could out of him. Yeah, you know, and I, you know, with with more time and more experience, you know, I love for him to be a world champ one day and coming back with us and sort of like breaking stuff down. You what know, what would you think about a deep dive with Montel Griffin? Are you teasing something? No, oh, that's coming. That's coming. Dude, and let me tell you, I know this guy. I've been stuck in a car with him for hours. I've been stuck on an airplane with him for hours. His story mm-hmm. is friggin' interesting. Yeah. And it's like the, the slickness and the things that have happened to him, either intentional or unintentional. Man, it's it's a fascinating story. You just kind of got to ride that roller coaster. I think we're going to need about a good two hours of that. Every bit of two hours. I can do two hours probably. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we could do two. Easy. Just uh, his amateur career alone is insane. Mm-hmm. Like it, it involves lawsuits and lawyers. I just want to hear the judges. stories. Yeah. I just want to hear the stories. So yeah, they're yeah, good. With that, thank you very much for listening, guys. If you like this, I'm going to sit here and say like, share, subscribe. But the truth of the matter is, they have deranked independent journalists, and to pretend that we are one of those is, uh, you know, a sad mistake. You know, we're <laughs> boxing and insiders, and we have MMA insiders, and we're fans. Any liking, any sharing, any subscribing, it's the only way we can grow. Yep. So, And, and I'm going to tell you another thing. We also got a Patreon. 
You guys want us to fly somebody in and do a deep dive with? Get on our Patreon. It's linked up, you know, yep. in, the, in, in the comment section. Yep, support. You know, support us. You give us enough money, I'll have somebody here. I can guarantee that. There you go. So, appreciate it. Thanks, guys. This is Sean Simpson, and you're watching, what, is watching, right? You're listening. Okay, and you're listening. Okay, got you. This is Sean Simpson, and you're listening to Fighters Corner Podcast. Do you say? Do it one more time. Okay. This is Sean Simpson. You're listening to Fighters Corner Podcast.